Hi, I'm Cash, and welcome back to Cash Talks Football, where I break down all the goals scored in the Premier League, where I use my vast experience of over 20 plus years of doing everything in the football community, all sorts of stuff, except for being a linesman, actually, well, I think I was a linesman, but um, right now we're going to be talking about Aston Villa and Arsenal, and uh, I'm going to talk uh, a little bit, the reason why I've got this blurry image up here is because I am going to come onto the left back in, in a second, um, and I'll, I'll start talking about it right here, because I really want to get onto the differences between coaches and managers, and Arteta's not a manager, he's a coach, and he just proved it. It uh, doesn't mean that you can't become a manager. It's easier to be, sorry, it's harder to be a coach than it is a manager anyway, but we'll get onto that in a second. I just want to talk about this here. You can already see when this ball's coming in, it's from the shot. But what I'm really talking about is the left back letting a player get in behind him because there was warning signs throughout the whole game that this was happening. And it does lead to the, uh, to the goal because he doesn't do his job properly. But he was not doing it properly the whole game. And this is kind of interesting where... Um, Arteta's good at things, which is, say, coaching his team, setting his team up, doing it, but he's not good at managing them, right? But this is a coaching issue. He should be able to get, fix this, and that's that's why I'm looking at it and going, well, that that shouldn't be a problem for him because that's in his wheelhouse. That's what's good. But what's costing the game is his managerial skills. Now, people don't really understand because they, they lump in all these things. Genuinely, when it comes to football and football coaching and football managing and fans, people haven't got a clue about any of it they think it's all the same and there's there's difference between trainers defensive trainers and people go oh, even though they're not labeled it and they're not labeled a defensive trainer or labeled this that's how they play that's how they are and until you start understanding that like you put like a jose Mourinho, he's not a good coach he's a good manager he can manage the assets that he's given given the right assets he can make a good team fantastic pep guardiola fantastic coach not necessarily a great manager if you listen to all the players after he's coached them, they hated him. They were only happy with being there because they were winning. And because you're winning at football, just like when Mourinho was winning at football, all your other sins go away. All the other bad things that you do in, you know, in, on the training field and the other things disappears when you're winning. So sometimes all of those things you don't find out until much later on. And like when people, oh, we found out Mourinho. No, Mourinho has always been the same, but he stopped winning. So that's what happened. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about a coach. A coach is someone who actually runs the sessions, actually knows what he's doing, actually runs, okay, right, what we've got a problem is we've got a problem with our left back, we need to fix that, and we're going to do that by running these types of sessions, and these sessions uh, address that issue, and that issue is now going to be fixed because everybody on the team is understanding it. It's not a manager's role. A manager is like, well, my left back feels not wanted, so I'm going to put my arm around him and talk to him, and people go, oh, but it's the same thing. It isn't. You have to separate the two so you can actually understand and build what area you're better in. And most people don't even understand that, haven't got a clue about that. And it's it's so important to start separating those things because then you as a coach, a manager or a player or anything like that, you can start understanding and building a better understanding of where your skills and strengths are. Because some people's skills and strengths are just talking to people, motivating them, getting them going. Not necessarily understanding the technical difficulties of why you shouldn't have a right-footed player on the left wing because all he wants to do, uh, Marcus Rashford, is run in and cut and strike at, uh, strike at the goal. He's never going to go down the line and cross the ball in because he's a right-footed player. He just wants to run in and cut. And the, the actual coaching implications that does to your team and how that messes up your whole strategy and your system up front. But that's very different from a manager's point of view where I want to keep him happy and put him in his favourite position where he gets to run inside and kick the ball at the goal. So all of those things are important. And the reason why I failed in management is because he took off Olegaard. And from the moment he took off Olegaard, Aston Villa scored and then he scored against away. All of their connect, and they went, oh, we put on Jorginho to hold stability of the game. You didn't need stability of the game, you needed to win it. And you took probably, arguably, one of the best top three uh, attacking midfielders in the Premier League off. And then you got punished. That's what a bad manager does. A bad manager makes that silly mistake because he needs to win this game. He needs to win this game and he needs to win a Champions League game um, in the week. That's his focus. His focus isn't the Champions League game until this game is over. And he can't bring on a Jorginho to control the game when it's nil-nil. You bring him on to control it when you're 1-0 up. And he made a massive error there. It's a managerial error, not a coaching error. And that is the problem with him. If that was a better manager, um, his change would have made a difference. His change would have created an Arsenal goal. His changes didn't because he doesn't really know that part of the game yet. He's still young. He's a good coach. I'm going to give him credit there because I yell at everybody about being bad at football. But this guy's not a bad coach at all. I get, Take my hats off there, but he is not a good manager. And if he can get that 
over the next sort of three or four years, he will be a force to be reckoned with. But I think it's going to take him time. And also, there's another problem that comes along there. when With coaches and managers, if he doesn't realise that he's the problem for this go- that not winning this game, he won't learn from it. Because a lot of people get too arrogant and go, oh, it's not my fault. that oh, I made the correct change. The player just didn't do it. So it's your fault. Because you know the players, and if he didn't do it right, well, you should have coached him better. You should have, like, It's on you. You need to make that happen. And if he doesn't realise that, he won't learn from it, and he won't be as good as he possibly could be. But let's get on to the goals. I have a problem with this first ball that uh, Villa played down the side. Now, by the way, I hate the Villa. Long story. Old friend of mine, DC, used to play with uh, Des Walker and those boys back in the time at Wolves. Um, yeah, hate the Villa. Right. So this um, when this ball gets played in behind here... This guy is making a run for it, right? He should be able to box him out, make this very, very difficult for him to receive the ball, and he doesn't make it hard enough. He just lets him receive it. Look at him. He's almost got his arms open, like, oh, it's all right, mate. You can have it. You might be offside. No, he is not working hard enough. And that's the difference of intensity, which I think um, a couple of these teams are lacking. I know uh, when I watched Liverpool play and I watched Arsenal play this weekend and in the week in the Champions League, they are lacking the intensity that it needs to win. They're just going through the motions. Oh, he's going to be offside. Oh, it's all right. But remember, this is the problem area. This is our left back. So remember, this is the correct body shape right now because that's all this guy needs to be able to mark. That's his area there. Bosh, right? He marks to, to that next defender. This guy marks to that next defender there. That's his little area. Blah, 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 blah. This guy, he marks. Well, he can't because where he's looking is there. That's where he's marking. So this is his problem. That's where he's marking. Right? So you can't have, you've got your one, uh, sorry, you've got these two, that guy's facing that way. You've got one guy's covering that zone. This guy's covering this zone. This guy's covering the zone in between them. And this guy's covering the zone over here. What are you doing, mate? Like, genuinely, what are you doing? And the reason why you t- you half turn is so you can do a couple of things, right? Half turn, where he's facing that way, so he can see the ball. Fantastic. But he can also see anyone that's coming in. So if this guy has his body shape correct and he's there on the half turn. Oh, no. Boomer's cash is zooming in again. Ah! And he's on the half turn. He can see this player coming in. But because he's facing the completely not a wrong way, he's got no idea whatsoever. Still not had a look behind him. Still doesn't know what's going on. His body shape is still completely utterly wrong. The two centre-backs do their job hustling and making sure that there's no shot here on target. Nothing comes in. Nothing's done here, uh, you know, wrong at all. And in comes this guy right here. The first question you're asking is, where's the left back? Because, well, that's, that's him there. Now he's trying to react. Absolutely terrible but it's terrible from the minute go and that's what i'm saying why i'm disappointed in arteta about his coaching and his managerial skills here because coaching he should have known that he should have known straight away that that was going to happen because i can tell you that's going to happen as soon as that ball goes out and i'm looking at my so one of the things all right if, if you're if you're coaching and you're looking at you'll get an attack down your right hand side over here right your immediate response is to look to your left hand side and then to the middle that's generally what you do because yeah and it sounds horrible, but you go, my player's terrible. He's going to get beaten. When he gets beaten, a cross is going to come in. Who's going to kick it in on the back post? Make sure that's marked up there. If he doesn't cross it in, he's going to knock it back. Let's see if we can deal with that as well. Because you assume your defender's going to be crap. That's generally what you think. If you're not thinking that way as a coach, you're not being smart enough. And if he wins it, you go, yay, you're the best player in the world. Pat him on the head. Give him a chocolate biscuit. Yeah, a little bit more about this little left back situation because the key, sorry. <sighs> He is the issue here. Everyone else has done their jobs, you know, properly. And he's just been caught out being lazy. And by the way, the right back as well could have could have done better. Could have done much better. And there's another instance. Like, you know, I always say the goal comes in three mistakes. Sometimes they're big ones. Sometimes they're little ones. But we've got three little mistakes to happen. And the goal ends up going in. Now, this is interesting. Right. I put a video out at the beginning of the season saying Arsenal were going to bottle it again. Right. And... At, uh, I think someone put like a clown emoji in the comments, I think, or something. I can't remember. Someone said something. And I told you they were going to bottle it again because of the, that right there, that attitude, right? The attitude is, oh, no, we've lost the uh, the Premier League on that one goal. Instead of, let's go get the other goal, boys. Put Let's go on. Oof, let's go attack. And because of that, you can see how much energy it's taken out of these players right here. And by the way, I think I think he's upset. This guy right here, I don't know who that is. It might be Declan Rice. It's just mad because it's him and he thinks he's crap. You Sometimes you, when you're raising your arms like that, it's because you're blaming the player. You're just like, oh, you're not mad at, at, at the situation that you're being 1-0 down. You're mad at the player that you're 1-0 down. There's something going on there. 
absolutely something going on there. This guy's upset because he's lost the league. This guy's upset because that guy cost him it. Two different body language shapes there, boys and girls. Two completely different. In good old cash fashion, I've got no idea that this is actually Declan Rice back here. And the left back isn't there. <laughs> that makes it even worse. Oh my god. I'm yelling at Declan Rice thinking he's the terrible left back. And he's still... But that makes sense why he's looking the wrong way in the first place. Because he doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing as a left back. He's actually playing like a centre midfielder in the box. Makes much more sense now. But again, where is the left back then? If Declan Rice is covering for you, mate, where are you? Uh, sorry, Declan, you shouldn't have been there in the first place. But I'm still going to yell at you, thinking that you're the left back. Oh my god, it gets even worse. Everything I said still stands. Just change the names. So right now, when we're looking at this, you can see, this is from a corner. Um, let me just check the name, because I got the last one wrong. I knew who it was. It was Emil Smith-Rowe. I should have known by the colour of his boots. Right, so you've got a problem here, because... He's not the quickest in the world, and he's definitely not the strongest. So when you they were taking this corner, and they're trying to score, they've made a mistake with whoever they've got the last man. And you can see how far everybody else has pushed up, leaving this guy completely and utterly free. One of the biggest problems... Ah, but this is why I go down to a bad manager again, right? So there's a point where you go, right, we're, we're losing, we've got to get a goal, we've got to get a tie. So do we lose 2-0, or do we lose what you know one nil what do we do what do we do and that's the difference of a good manager a good manager makes it one one and doesn't lose two nil because he doesn't leave the back door open he doesn't let that happen he spots that makes sure that this doesn't happen and he makes sure his team is still in the title hunt a bad manager panics throws every, all everything forward trying to get another goal and then they get done on the counter that's what a bad manager does and that's what Arteta hopefully learns from and he does blame himself he should and then he doesn't start looking at his players except for that left back that Declan Rice was covering for <clears throat> yeah that's funny I do have a little issue with the keeper though he needs to be standing strong I don't like it when these keepers come out and they try to touch the floor with their hands instead of standing up big and strong with their hands out here like this oh, that's how I want you stood I don't want you bent over with your little spine curled up with your legs and your hands touching the floor. I mean, look, look, look at the difference. That one, obviously this is drawn to scale. And that one, look at the difference. Yeah, that goalkeeper drawn to scale. Look, clearly that one as well. It's awful. Yeah, he needs to be bigger. Quality little finish over the top though. Gets himself a goal. Gets his team the victory. I'll see you next time on Cash Gets the uh, Left Backs Named Wrong. <laughs>